You're such an asshole! So in the previous video, Real was in the chat room and he donated a super chat. And uh, I think it was in regards to computer science. And uh, in light of the increasing interest rates, the overhiring of tech people, I guess, which would be the second dot-com bubble during the disease, all the, all the content creator companies that want to have their own streaming service, and then the subsequent firing and laying. Oh, and then Intel's fucking up, and then Microsoft just painted a big old pride flag on every video game it ever made, and I'm like, ah, fuck you, we're done with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it it's a real tech recession. It is a real tech recession. And so my question was, long term, I was under the impression like, well, okay, yeah, you know, uh, industries come and go. There's boom and bust in all industries. But long term, computer science seemed like, yeah, that'd be a, once it recovers, that should be, you know, a solid, almost trade type of skill. And real, um, <clears throat> I guess he disagrees here. I said, so why don't you send me something and let me know? Because I think it's of benefit to my audience. Like, well, should I go into computer science or not? What's the long-term outlook look uh, like? And Real writes this is a lengthy uh, email, so I wanted to read it. As requested, here's my reasoning as to why a computer science degree isn't a great option now or going forward. Firstly, computer science is a bit of misnomer since the vast majority of people that graduated with said degree went on to be what I would derisively call code monkeys hacking together the landscape of, landscape of broken, barely functional software we are faced with today, ignoring all the education and science of computing in the process. Well, that would explain why things are getting shittier. That definitely explains shittification, like how games of olden days are better than the ones now. It also explains why there's a, like, my email just don't work. It just, I mean, it does, but it's just like, I didn't ask for this fucking shit. <clears throat> this leads me to my second point, which ties in with one of your common themes of future, of the future being an autodidactism. Programming and the pursuit of excellence in computer science is quite possibly the ultimate example and opportunity for autodidactic success. The best programmers are self-taught, and we have literally never lived in a better time in terms of resources to teach yourself how to code. YouTube is replete with high-quality tutorials and programming resources. There are mountains of code to study on places like GitHub, and there are numerous discussion sites like Stack Exchange, which admittedly is cancer to read a lot of the time, to get feedback from experts free of charge. Why would you pay a university huge sums of money for something that is freely available if you have the initiative to pursue it? That in turn leads to my next point. Well, I got it just to add here, real. I see a lot of bullshit business uh, crap. I, they constantly try to improve shit. It's like, no, I never asked for that. And I'm wondering how much of that is they're forced to take some business classes or constant improvement classes. And you see that. Um, <clears throat> business degree like hey we, we improved it no one asked you to improve it so i'm wondering if a formal education is really fucking shit up or at making things less common sense and therefore worse that in turn leads to my next point which is that unlike the vast majority of modern industry software companies are relatively meritocratic and will potentially hire you if you could demonstrate expertise on the whiteboard and in the interview rather than relying on credentials. Assuming, of course, that you can get in an interview in the sea of fake job listings and bad faith actors. We went through a phase in the industry where credentialism was on a steep decline because anyone with the knowledge of programming space understood all the talented 10x programmers are self-taught and more importantly, self-motivated to code and innovate. If you're not familiar with the jargon, 10x is just a reference to a super coder of sorts that is 10 times as productive as your average code monkey. This, of course, is far less prevalent in the corporate world since they generally have a stick up their ass as far as degrees go. But why would you want to work for them anyway? Good point. Smaller companies tend to offer robust compensation, more opportunities for advancement, and a general lack of oppressive corporate culture. The company I work for has less than 20 employees all male, middle-aged, and invested in the job. That sounds like heaven. All male, all middle-aged, and invested in the job. Wait, no Karens? 
No HR meetings, no diversity rah-rah team, no, no mandatory Friday uh, pizza party. Uh, <clears throat> there's not an ounce of workplace drama or slacker behavior. The company is fantastically successful because everything is lean and mean, no bullshit. Just get the job done and you're golden. But, but what about diversity and what about, what about women? Like <clears throat> that's awfully misogynistic of you. Oh wait, the product works. Oh, that leads to the last point I'll make, which is twofold. Entrepreneurship is largely an ego trip, but it's still a real thing in the world of IT services and software development. If you got the goods, there's still an opportunity to make a fortune, even if it means developing a new concept and selling out to the highest bidder. If you're not, if you're that good, you know it, and you'll have the drive and work ethic to hold down a job while developing your product to the point that you could secure some seed money, even if it comes from outside sources, it turn into a full-fledged retirement at 30. Uh, type of plan. Contrast that to getting a degree and taking a corporate job where you'll likely be replaced by some combina combination of H1B worker and AI. Even good programmers will be affected by this phenomenon. All right. So you believe the lower level <clears throat> AI programming or the lower level programming can be replaced by AI or immigrant labor, whether imported or outsourced. As companies, ch okay, can be affected by this phenomenon as companies chase profits via expensive redu expense reduction rather than developing human capital. All this basically boils down to a simple principle. Are you talented and motivated and do you enjoy programming? If you would do it for free just for pleasure and yet someone will pay you for the fruits of that labor, you get the best of both worlds and that does not require a degree. So you're not against necessarily the field. You're just against going and getting a degree in it. It requires hard work and a genuine – wait, what if I'm just passionate? Can I just – real, can I just be passionate about it? It's like I'm, I really, really, really like it. So now I make $100,000? Uh, requires hard work and a genuine interest in the subject matter, which is why anyone that asks me for advice on entering the industry that doesn't seem all in, borderline autistically obsessed with coding, I turn away. Specialization and automation – along with migrant workers are going to continue to shrink opportunities in the field to the point where the average programmer's degree will be worth as much as a liberal arts degree is today. Wow. Which is sad considering the vast difference in utility those fields of knowledge offer. If you're technologically inclined, it's much better to pursue a career in networking slash IT or electrical engineering. Okay. So be a computer networker <clears throat> because employers can't replace these positions as readily with offshore workers or AI. The closer you are to being hands-on with the hardware that makes the modern world go, the lower your chances of being replaced or not hired in the first place. There's good money in building out administrating networks, and you aren't chained to a desk if you have the skills to physically build out the network and then do the logical administration. Purple collar jobs. Never heard of this. Purple collar jobs are the way to go for future prospects in the technology world, considering job security, compensation, and quality of life. I'm semi-retired at this point doing that kind of work, which keeps me active, but only takes about 10 hours a week of my time while paying me six figures annually. Where have all the good men gone? Why be a junior developer at a big corporation earning shit pay with shittier hours when you can make electrician money while not breaking your back? Just build up your knowledge base over time and make yourself indispensable to maintaining legacy code bases and network, which face a rapidly shrinking pool of people capable of meaningfully interacting with them. And you can write your own ticket. If you have any other questions, let me know. No, this is great, Real. I really appreciate it, though. I'm more, what's a purple collar job? <clears throat> purple collar job. Blend of white collar and blue collar skills. Often IT support specialist, technical sales reps, and skilled trade supervisors. Hmm. I wonder how many articles were written about this. Okay. All right. No, real. Thank you very much. I appreciate you providing that that detailed and thorough uh, explanation. And I guess the, for those of you who are interested in computer science, I guess the <clears throat> the prevailing wisdom is now: go teach yourself. Learn it on the side or learn it on your own time, but don't pay someone to teach you. Um, get good at it. Maybe in route to that, get yourself a computer networking certification or background. And then, yeah, so make your way into it. Uh, but no, that's good to know that you, you would, in general, if you are going to go to college, go for computer networking.
or become an electrician or go to electrical engineering, but you would not recommend computer science. So then the brand has also gone down. The cachet of a computer science degree has gone down as well. Then you factor in AI and foreign labor. Okay. All right. Good. It's good to know. Good to know. Staying on top of labor market evolution. Uh, link below, I have a link to my book, Worthless, The Young Person's Indispensable Guide to Choosing the Right Major. And I believe bachelor pad economics to get your financial shit together. We got one super chat party, 10 generous dollars. It's pretty sad. I learned nothing from college. I passed all my exams from self-teaching myself shit. I basically paid for a piece of paper, computer science, bachelor's of arts. I never understood that. How can you get a bachelor's of arts <clears throat> in a degree in computer science? Like, doesn't that have to be a bachelor's of science? All the knowledge I have is self-teaching or Udemy. Riol, the skills are valuable. The degree is not. Thank you for being very concise. Thank you, sir. All right, there you guys go. Thank Riol in the comments section for taking the time to write that very long and well-scripted email. He didn't have to do that. And we will see you guys later. Toodles.